you're heading to Sintra and you want all the details that are gonna make your trip amazing. For such a small town, Sintra has so much to offer and we have all the details that you need to make it the best trip of all. We just finished our visit in Sintra and learned a lesson or five that we can share with you so that it makes your trip nice and smooth and enjoyable. We're gonna share with you five must knows, which include a description, six things that you should do while you're in Sintra, walkability and drivability, the food that you can have while in Sintra, and what might be available for kids, as well as one major mistake that you can avoid and one major takeaway. So let's dive in. Five must knows of Sintra. Sintra is full of life and history. We would describe it as Portugal's capital of palaces and castles. This beautiful town sitting amongst the mountains will have you in awe from the time you arrive until you leave. Likely wishing you stayed longer. To see Sintra in full, you'd need three to four days. Any less than that, then some of the things to do will have to meet the chopping block. In early May, we stayed right in the heart of Sintra. Steps from the shops and restaurants and a tuk-tuk ride to Penna Palace. This time of year, the weather is approximately 25 to 30 degrees Celsius or 85 degrees Fahrenheit and will reach much higher in the middle of summer. In our experience visiting Portugal and Spain, as we have been doing for the last two months now, is great in the spring as the weather has not yet gotten terribly hot. Number two, six things to do in Sintra. Number one is Penna Palace, aka the colorful castle in Portugal. This palace is quite the sight to behold. The exterior is the best part of the palace with its colorful walls, variety in style and influence, and the beautiful gardens and lakes throughout the grounds. We did have a chance to view the interior, which was quite interesting, but felt more like a museum and one long lineup. If you choose to see the interior of the palace, then here are a couple tips to keep in mind. One, book the earliest time slot you can. Number two, line up for the palace as soon as possible. In other words, don't stop for the million pictures you'll want to take, do that after you view the interior. Number three, the lineup can take one to two hours if you don't get there quickly. Number four, there's the entrance to the grounds and then there's the entrance to the interior. They are different places all together and your time slot is for the entrance to the interior, which is up at the palace. Number five, we took a total of five hours to see the interior and exterior of the palace, as well as the lakes and gardens. Another sight to see is Quinta de Regalera. Personally, this was my favorite. The palace itself is fairly small, but still looks absolutely stunning on the outside. Where Regalera stands out is their grounds, the caves and the initiation well that it's famous for. The grounds are full of a bunch of small towers, beautiful gardens and winding caves, waterfalls and pools. You could explore the caves for hours, seeing where the path leads you. The twisting stairwell is not for the person with a big fear of heights. Because of my fear, I almost couldn't make the descent and never looked over the edge. Sadly, my fear stopped me from enjoying it as much as I would have liked to. But the rest of the family and the many others there certainly loved this unique experience. We spent three hours at Regulera wandering the lovely grounds. Number three, you want to see the Castle of the Moors. With only two days in Sintra, we didn't make it to this castle, but we could see the stone walls from all over the town. Resembling the Great Wall of China, the walls line the highest peak of the mountain. The climb to this location is known to take the wind out of you, so beware it's not an easy hike. Built in the 8th century, this was a well-defensible fortress until it fell to the Christian Reconquest in the 12th century. Out of the palaces we didn't get to see, this one is one we wish we had made the time for. Number four, I interrupt this long list of palaces to see in Sintra to mention the need to see the beautiful and lively downtown area. Full of great restaurants and boutique shops, you will love to wind through the streets, tasting delicious treats, sipping their epic sangrias, and eating their delicious food. Don't miss the opportunity to check out this beautiful town. All right, back to palaces and number five the National Palace of Sintra. This palace is in the heart of the town, but we sadly missed seeing the inside of this grand palace. From pictures, you can see that many walls are covered with painted blue tiles and detailed ceilings. It is a historic house museum that would be great to take in if you have the time and energy after hiking around so many of the other palaces. And finally, one last palace to share with you is the Montserrat Palace. 
Palace, perhaps the lesser known palace in Sintra. This is an Arabic and Gothic inspired palace. Because it's not as well known, this would be the castle to see if you aren't a fan of crowds. Each of the other palaces, especially Penna, can see many crowds throughout the day, while Menaceret doesn't. Check this hidden gem out if you have the time. The third thing you must know is about the walkability and drivability. Be warned. Walkability and drivability are both a challenge in Sintra. First, let's talk about driving there. The town is actually fairly small and the parking is incredibly limited. Unless you get there before eight or nine in the morning, you will likely not get a spot to park. The town has many levels and crazy one-way streets with also some crazy drivers. So it's not for the faint of heart. We were incredibly lucky to get a spot near our Airbnb. You basically have three options when parking in Sintra. One, you come early to get a spot. Two, you luck out and get a spot in a paid parking lot or get one far from where you would want to park and after much searching. Or three, you take the train in from Lisbon. All right, now that you're parked, is Sintra walkable? Well, yes, but this has a few caveats. The town of Sintra is walkable, hilly and tiring at times, but walkable and enjoyable as you take in the shops. Getting to many palaces is walkable, but Penda Palace and the Moorish Castle is challenging to say the least. It could take you over an hour to walk from the town to Penda Palace. When you see it from the town, it can be deceiving, but but that's how long it takes. So your choices aside from walking are taking a bus, a taxi, or a tuk-tuk ride. Here are a few tips to know about this. One, finding the bus taxi tuk-tuks in the morning before 10 a.m. is actually not that easy. During the day at high times, they can be found anywhere. But in the morning, the taxis are often at the train station, the tuk-tuks are fewer, and you need to get into the heart of the town to find any. And we never quite figured out when the buses come, so this info was just not that easy to find. Two, make sure you have cash just in case. We needed it for a tuk-tuk ride. If you choose to take a tuk-tuk, then know that kids are to be about seven years and older. We found that out a little too late. Number three, Three, give yourself one to one and a half hours to get to the entrance of Penna Palace to view the interior. Number four of the must knows, food. Let's talk about food. Sintra was a delight for finding delicious food. This is made easier for those that eat a more omnivore style, but as vegetarians, it has been a challenge in most places we've visited, and Sintra is the exception. We enjoyed some delicious Italian and Indian food while there, but there were so many more restaurants, including authentic Portuguese cuisine that you could choose from. We highly recommend that you try a sangria while there. Most of the restaurants seem to offer their own unique and amazing twist on them, always full of fruit and many quite gigantic. Number five, and the final thing you must know about Sintra is, what they have for kids. If your kids love palaces and castles, then Sintra is a great location for them. Know that they will get tired, especially if you don't take the available methods of transportation to get around. Prepare to make frequent stops in the shade and bring water bottles and snacks to help out. If they are over seven, then they will likely love the Tuk Tuk ride. While Penna Palace is still a great location for kids to see, ours loved the look of the castle, Regalira seems to be more leisurely with more places and small towers for them to just run around and explore. There is a tram that runs from Sintra to a beach resort about 15 kilometers away. If your kids enjoy unique transportation experiences like ours do, then you could take the tram to enjoy the beach as well. With all this in mind, I'm sure your kids will love Sintra. One mistake that you should avoid when going to Sintra. This is in particular about Penna Palace and we did discuss it a little bit earlier. We had a hard time getting to the Penna Palace entrance. We left our Airbnb around 8 a.m. Our ticket was for 9.30 to enter the palace, but we didn't actually end up getting there until 10. It took us nearly two hours, basically two hours, to find our way up to the Penna Palace grounds and then into the Penna Palace grounds, up to the entrance. We didn't really think about a lineup, and so uh, we did end up taking pictures ahead of time, which is why we've given you so many tips on how to do it so that you save some time it just allows you to be able to see more if you know how to use your time properly. So be sure to check out our, like to follow our tips above. Because our tickets said that we need to be there at the time slot we picked, we were actually really stressed as well about whether or not we were going to miss our opportunity to go into the palace. We had paid for this and now we were like, oh great, we have this hour long lineup that we're gonna have to wait through and we're already half an hour past the time slot. Are we ever going, are we even gonna be allowed in? We did find a staff member that told us that we can get in as long as you are 
past your time slot, you should be able to get in. I mean, that's what they told us. Hopefully that's what everybody goes, the rule everybody goes by. So know that if you do have a specific time slot, you should be able to get in. Just get into the lineup and eventually you'll get there. Our biggest takeaway. Truth be told, we may not have actually chosen to view the interior of Penda Palace given the choice again after our experience. Not simply just, not really just because it was stressful, but because with kids especially, it doesn't really quite feel worth it. Um, the outside is 100% the like spectacular part. The grounds, they're beautiful. The inside is interesting, don't get me wrong. It's just, it does actually feel like you're in a lineup going through a museum. And so while the interior is interesting and maybe if you don't have kids and you love that kind of thing, then go for it. But I think we would have preferred to reduce our stress, not spend as much money, and also still be able to see the exterior of the palace and then take the extra time and money that we would have saved from doing the interior and put it into maybe another one of the palaces or the Moorish castle. So that's our takeaway. That's what we would have liked. If you have kids, that's something to consider because for the kids especially, that long lineup through the museum, they were quite bored by the end. Our six-year-old was really having a hard time. Our 13-year-old you know, he can handle it, but it was like the end, it was kind of grumpy. So just consider, maybe it's not worth it, but maybe hunt, like you are really curious to know what's inside that palace, and so go for it. In the end, we loved Sintra. It really should be on your list if you go to Portugal. It has so much to see and do. It's incredible how much there is to see and do in such a small space. Um, and so we highly recommend that you put it on your list and you go see these beautiful, beautiful palaces and castles and the town itself. We have been journeying through the Iberian Peninsula for the last two months. So that includes much of Spain and into a little bit into Portugal. And so we have made so many resources for anyone who wants to see this region. But we did make one that's about spring in Spain, which would be very similar to the uh, spring in Portugal as well. And so if you want to take a look at that video, we will link it right here click on it here and check it out because it will tell you all about what it's like to actually be here in the spring because um, I know that summer is the popular time to come and travel but spring is quite an ideal time so check that video out um, otherwise we really hope you liked the video please click on the like button subscribe to our channel um, to follow us along on our world adventures where we are taking you on a journey with a family traveling the world full-time we'll see you every further mile